Jesus, if you are a lady, put your hand. Say, In the name of Jesus, I shall be a sweet mama and a sweet lover. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, shout amen. Wow, a very, very good morning to you. We are so glad, we are so excited to come to you live today. This is the second day of the month of August and we are coming to you live from our headquarters right here in Ongata Rongai. This is Harvest Family Church and let me tell you something, you are at the right place and because you have tuned in, let me tell you something that your life will never be the same again. Your life can never remain the same again. This is church beyond the four walls. We are coming to you live wherever you are. I don't know if you're at your workplace, you're at home or you're in the matatu or something. 
coming. We are coming. We are bringing to you church wherever you are. And let me tell you something. You will be blessed in a mighty, mighty way. This is not just church, but this is an experience. We have so many activities lined up for you. We have the movie stars. We have the dancing stars. We have our singing stars. I want you to get ready. I want you to prepare yourself because God is about to do something amazing. I hope you're very expectant for this service and you will have a good time in the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Daisy. My name is Wanja Mungai. Pastor Daisy and I will be taking you through today's live broadcast. And I'm sure we are going to get blessed together. Wherever you're watching us from, please know that we are really appreciative of you. We are happy. We are delighted that you have made a decision to fellowship with us. This is Harvest Family Church, Church Beyond the Four Walls, reaching you from wherever you are any part of the world, any part of Africa, and any part of Kenya. Kisi, I tell you, Buarire, Muranga, Mwadhaniagosho, Kajiado, Ashelong, I'm just trying. Mombasa, Hamjambo, Banasifiwe. It is good to see all of you. Please, don't watch alone. Send this link on Facebook, on YouTube, to your friends, to your colleagues, to your mother, to your father, to your anyone you know. Make sure they're also getting blessed together with you because it is wrong to just get blessed alone. Whereas you had another chance, I mean, whereas you had a chance to make sure that someone else got blessed. So make sure that you participate in that form of evangelism. Also, if you're in the house, please make sure you're not having your breakfast or you're not in bed. This is a time for the Lord. Just stand up from wherever you are. Just make sure you're participating. If it is your first time, please, please welcome home. Family Harvest Church, we take everyone as family, part of our family. Please tell us your name, where you're watching us from, and tell us how you are loving the service. Interact with us on the comment section, on Facebook, on YouTube, and also make sure that you tell people to subscribe. Let us see who is online. I see Margaret Wanjiko, <laughs> American African girl. That's Daisy, I'm sure. And then I'm um, expectant of God's word today. I thank God for keeping us safe. Watching from Juba, South Sudan. Wow, Maggie Jabet. Welcome. Please don't fall off. Make sure you stick with us to the end of the broadcast. So much more is lined up, is lined up for us. And I'm sure we're going to get blessed. Clara Subwa is, is also online. Thank you so much. Prince Rogers, thank you so much. How about Meru? How do you say praise God in Meru? I'm not sure. I'll find out next, next Sunday. I'll make sure I have a word for you. Good morning, Maggie Wangeshi. Good to see you. Stephen Wainaina, good morning. Pastor Daisy, maybe you can take us through YouTube comments. Okay, just um, in a few seconds. Um, on YouTube, I can see Kevin Alesh. Thank you so, so much, Kevin Alesh, for tuning in. I can see Sandra Muchoki. Thank you so much, Sandra, for tuning in. And I can also see Malachi O'Neill saying, I am here and getting ready to be blessed. Yes, yeah, someone is saying, how about Kasipulka Bondo? Nango! Yes, that's what. <laughs> yes, Pastor Daisy. So, are you excited to be in church this morning? Wow, I am so excited, um, especially considering that this is a new month. I am so curious just to know what our man of God will say. You know, mm -hmm. like every month he has a word for us. Yes. And I mean, I can't wait for the word. Yes, me yes. too. And it's always such a blessing. If you believe this word and you take it as your own, you connect with us. Something surely will happen to you and something will change. So make sure you're expectant. Just get ready as you would with a normal service. Make sure your tithe, your offering is packed up. Make sure you are just dedicating this particular time for God and you shall be blessed.
it says with the message version so what do you think with God on our side like this how can we lose Amen. how can we lose let me say that again so what do you think with God on our side like this how can we lose he's not gonna he's never lost he's not going to start today he's not going to fail you he's never done it and he's not gonna start today do you believe it do you believe it now I just want you to go before the Lord just worship him worship him just worship the Lord worship the Lord there's no one like you Lord When you move, such an easy thing for you to do, and your 
battle No, you never lost a battle I know, I know You never the Lord like Yahweh Yahweh we praise your holy name yes. are you ready for this yes. are you ready yes. are you ready yes. please get some space get some space Yeah. 
enjoyed and I'm sure you're at home clapping your hands and I know you're not seated, yeah? I told you as we were starting this service, this is not just a church service, but this is an experience. Tell your neighbor, this is an experience. We have so many things lined up for you. And right about now, I want us to go straight into the Harvest Bulletin. And today we only have two announcements. And I want you to be very, very keen because they are very, very important. So uh, this week, starting Tuesday, all the way to Thursday, that is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have seasons of withdrawal. This is a time of prayer. And it is a time for us to just withdraw from our normal you know, schedule and just spend an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. And guess what? Our man of God, Pastor Jimmy Masharia, is going to be leading us from Tuesday all the way to Thursday, from 11 a.m. until very late. So please make sure you tune in. If, if, if it's a must for you to like, you know, get an off day from, from, from your work, please make sure you ask for an off day because these prayers are very, very important. Anytime he calls for seasons of withdrawal, I tell you something great and something amazing normally happens. Please make sure you're part of these prayers and your life will never be the same again. And now um, to the second announcement, our junior harvesters we have something amazing for you on harvest tv kenya if you're a parent and you're watching right now and you have kids please make sure you tune in to harvest tv kenya we have our teachers who are already there with amazing amazing lessons we also have dances i mean it's just a full package you know for the sunday school yeah make sure that your child watches you know the harvest tv kenya considering you know like if your child is from three to six years old um, we have lessons from three to six and I mean all the other ages too you can find them there at Harvest TV Kenya just in case the teachers have given an assignment parents please make sure you submit the assignment to the WhatsApp community so that the teachers can be able to just you know take care of your child in a very very good way and I'm done with this with the announcement so right about now I told you it is not just a church service but but it is an experience, yeah? We have our dancing stars. These guys have been practicing, yeah? They have been practicing, and they're so gifted, and they're so talented. We have guys who are from here, from um, Harvest Family Church, um, the mother church here, and we also have some guys from the choir church. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to just help me appreciate the dancing stars. Even before you see them, please clap for them. Thank you so, so much. Dancing stairs, take us away.
got an amazing, amazing performance from the dancing stars. Kama unajua bila yesu kame umana, please appreciate them. And especially if you cannot dance like they dance, appreciate them from wherever you are. And now we have another amazing performance from a group of people who are always a blessing to us. A dedicated team of young, young people from ages between 3 and 11. And guess what? Nothing dampens their spirit when it comes to serving the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the Junior Harvesters. Jesus. Please appreciate those little angels praising the Lord and serving the Lord from home. Please appreciate them. 
It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing. Please, it is not too late to share our broadcast on Facebook, on YouTube. It is not too late. The man of God hasn't stood up yet, and you want that person who hasn't been to church in a long time not to get blessed. So please make sure you, you reach them. Okay. Um, the other thing is that we... Um, Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. It happens. <laughs> it happens. This is church. This is our church. We love it. Don't you love it? <laughs> it's our church and it's church beyond the four walls and at times butterflies set in, right? All right. So we now are about to hear the word of God. And just before that, we have a singing star who is always blessing our hearts. Every time she sings, we are always so blessed. She serenades us. She leaves us just so blessed. And I'm sure you are about to guess who this is. This is the one and only singing star, woman of God, Pastor Liz Macau. Serenade us, please. Raining for 
for you when I'm just 16 Just like Uzziah Just like Uzziah Woo! Yeah, yeah Raining for you, raining for you when I'm just 16 
You can do better than that. Come on, come on. You can do better than that. Amen, amen. Why don't you wake up and adjust yourself, adjust your bones? Okay, come on, come on. Stretch, stretch. You know, we are getting to another part of the service that is so fantastic. And I know you will be blessed by amen. While you are doing that, adjusting yourself, I want you to share this broadcast. Come on, think somebody you haven't talked to and call them, tell them, be part of this service. I want to see you doing it. Amen, amen. You know, and while we are doing that, you know, today I saw a lady somewhere and the husband had gifted her with a Bluetooth speaker. And I discovered that if you're a wife, if you have not been gifted with a Bluetooth speaker, you need to up your game. It is a good sign of a good wife. When the husband say, my wife must have a Bluetooth speaker, you are doing something good. Amen. And then something else, I, I saw this, you know, I want you to share, I want you to share. You know, there are these words, and they are say different. There is goat, court, court ya koti, court ya kushika, and the court ya kuva. But for a challenging, this is only one word. Caught, caught, caught. Na hakuna kitu mutamufanya. Finally, I saw this from a powerful man of God. That no matter what you are going through in life, eat fast. Amen? So, enjoy life. I hope you are sharing and enjoying every part of the service. Amen. Let me tell you, one of the amazing things you can do is to be part of a church where someone is speaking into your life to take your life to the next level. And as the man of God is going to come and minister to us, I want you to be armed with your notebook, to be armed with your pen, with your iPad, your tablet. Position yourself. Let there be no more movement eating. If you are eating, hey, what? Hey, please, please, please. Some of you are eating mothokoi, you know yourself. Please, no eating. Let us all be focused. We are in the presence of the Lord and we are going to be blessed in the name of Jesus. The message Bible says in the book of First John chapter number 1, verse 11 and 12, it says this, He came to his own people, but they did not want him. So every man is sent to a particular people, and this become the people that belongs to him. He can call them, these are my people. But Jesus came to certain people, but they did not want him. But look, but verse 2, but whoever did want him, the one who said, this is my prophet, this is my man of God, this is the voice to take me to the next level, who believed he was who he claimed and will do what he said, he made to be their rightful self, their child of God's self. Let me tell you, Unless you come into contact with the man of God, you will never know your true self. You will never know you are God, you are child of God's self. There is a particular person God wants you to be, a champion, a winner. Hey, the head, never the tail. Always leading, always shining in life. And when you connect with your man of God, this is what you discover about yourself. But you must believe that he is this what he has said over your life that this year you will forcefully advance no matter what and that will be your portion in Jesus name are you ready to receive our voice of God are you ready to receive our man of God are you are you are you are you, are you expectant do you have a demand your blessing on his anointing help me welcome to this place our senior pastor pastor Jimmy Masharia
shout of praise. Amen. Beautiful. Now, before you sit down, I want us to pray for a few minutes. I think it's very important for us to pray because of what is happening in our world. Amen. And so in the house, don't sit down. It's prayer time. In the house. I can see some people were already seated. You were even singing the song while seated. So can you stand up now? Stand up now. We want to pray. Amen. Psalms 118. Psalms 118. That's where our prayer is coming from. Amen. And then I want you to call people or write them a text, your neighbors, and tell them that pastor is on now. Because some people don't have bundles to listen from the beginning. But they want to hear the word. And, they, and the prayer is very important. So I wanted to pray this prayer like your life depends on it because it does. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth and the Bible says, no, don't open first. Let's read first. <laughs> New King James Version. The Bible says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and for his mercies and joys forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercies and joys forever. So I want to us to thank God for his mercy. Because we are where we are today because of his mercy. How many of you know that he would have died this week? He would have died last week. And you would have not had food last week. But God has taken care of you somehow. Amen. It is his mercy that endures forever. Amen. Amen. And then he says, verse 2, let Israel now say his mercy endures forever. So let the house of Aaron now say his mercy endures forever. And let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy endures forever. So we are praying for the mercies of God. Amen. That they will be in, in abundance in our lives. Let me tell you something, uh, my viewers. If you don't get the mercies of God, you will not survive this season. This season is about to get even more difficult and tough as far as diseases and sickness and deaths are concerned. But we are praying the mercy of God will be upon us. Lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For your mercy. For your mercy. That endures forever. That endures forever. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. As I clap my hands. As I clap my hands. And as I pray. And as I pray. I invoke your mercy. I invoke your mercy. Over my life. Over my life. This week. This week. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release your mercy. Release your mercy. Release your mercy. Release your mercy as far as my health is concerned. Release your mercy as far as my relationships are concerned. Release your mercy as far as my life, my health, my marriage, my life is concerned. Over my life, over my life, over my life, 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 my Oh Lord, Hakamalu Raga, have mercy, have mercy on me, have mercy on us, have mercy, Kazala, Ozala, Umriga, Umriga, Umri Granda Labrega, Kaz Glory, Gramira, Braganda Labrega, Grande, Father, have mercy, Father, have mercy, Father, have mercy, where we were supposed to die, let your mercy be there, let your mercy prevail, where we were supposed to be poor, over everything, let your mercy be there, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. To be put to shame. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Oh, Akada, have mercy, Lord. Hey, shada, da, 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 da. Shada, my granda. Marie, granda. Tedu di gisi tale granda, granda. Eka zole granda. Makaso koto lo kovu nyoli granda. Kanta ilo kere granda le bre granda. Eta la braka filo bre granda. We ask for your mercy. We ask for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be merciful unto us. 
let your mercy be renewed this morning. Our mercy cannot save us. Our carefulness cannot save us. Only you can save us. Only you can save us. By your mercy. Have mercy on this land. Have mercy on our land. Have mercy on our nation. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy on our economy. We have not helped you. Have mercy Shakatara bragando, roro 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 the Bible says, I called on the Lord in distress and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. Ladies and gentlemen, our God is a God who hears us when we call in distress. And are we not in distress? We are in distress as a nation. We are in distress as a church. We are in distress as a people. And so we are calling on the name of the Lord. And guess what? He will answer us and set us on a broad place. The Bible says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. Wow. And then verse 7, the Bible says, the Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. So the desires of my enemies will be brought to nothing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Oh, yeah. Lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. I am calling you in distress. I am calling you in oh, distress. Lord, oh Lord, answer us. Answer us, And oh, set us on a broad and place. set us on a broad place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Every Jesus. Every fear in us. Every fear in us. Deal with it, O oh God. Deal with it, O oh Lord. Because the Bible says. Because the Bible the says. Lord is on my side. The Lord is on Lord, my side. Lord, be on my side. Lord, be on my be side. Be on my side. Be on my side. I will not fear. I will not fear. For what can man do to For me? What can man what do can to me? What can corona do to me? What can diseases do to me? Because you are on my side. You are on Open my your side. mouth and pray that prayer. Bakusukula klatili gram re grabariya basanda ribre grasatala prekanda. Be on my side. Pataba, 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 pataba. Lord. Only you can save us. Only you can save us. Oh, Grame, Gramenda, Gramenda. Only you can help us. Only you can help us. Save us in your mercy and answer us in our distress. Shakala brakan, dele brakan, dele brakan. Shakala brakan. We have financial distress. Bring us out of every distress. Yes, Lord, bring us out. Hear us. Hear us. Hear us. We cry to you. Bring us out. Set us on a broad place. Yes, Lord. Set us on a broad place this morning. Kajizo laziba. Kroni chiji ni ante kaseta la la. Oh, matu braka, matu braka te brenda. Prati do osoto. In the name of Jesus. Look, listen to me. If you are seated, stand up in the house. Don't eat while we are praying. Somebody is eating strong tea and ugali. Don't eat strong tea. Look, you need these prayers. I'm telling you. These prayers will work for you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want you to rise up and I want you to share the broadcast. Let somebody know that we are on. Yes. Give them the link. Amen. Amen. Alright. Our next prayer is that I will put my trust in the Lord. Yes. And I will not put my confidence in man. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Lord. My trust. My trust. For my health. For my health. For my wealth. For my wealth. For my long life. For my long life. Is in you. Is in you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. Name Our of confidence Jesus. is not in the government. Our confidence is not in the government. Our confidence is not in friends and relatives. Our confidence and our trust is in you. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Our trust is in you. Our trust is in you. Everybody pray, everybody pray. Everybody 
trust be in the Lord. Amen. May your confidence be in the Lord. Amen. And may you receive every good thing that comes from the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Verse 10. The Bible says, all nations surround me. Verse 10. All nations surrounded me. David was praying and he was saying, all nations were surrounding me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Amen. So we are praying that anything that has surrounded us, surrounded our marriage, surrounded our health, our nation, because I can sense a surrounding. It's almost like you cannot escape. It's like you're surrounded. When you're surrounded, you can't escape. Is it? Yes. So we are praying that anything that has surrounded us, that in the name of the Lord, it will be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, anything that is aiming at destroying you, yes. killing you, yes. in the name of Jesus, it will oh, be destroyed. Yes. Verse 11, they surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Amen. In the name of whom? The Lord. Of the Lord, I will destroy them. Verse 12. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. Amen. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Amen. Whatever is surrounding you, poverty, yes. coronavirus, heart disease, diabetes, whatever it is, may it be defeated this morning. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord they have surrounded, they us, have surrounded us. But in your name, but in your name let, them be destroyed. let them be destroyed. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh Lord. They have surrounded me. They have surrounded yes. me. Yes. They have surrounded our nation. They have surrounded our, they have nation. Surrounded our lives. They have surrounded our but, lives. Oh Lord, but oh Lord, in your name, in, your name, in the name of Jesus name Christ, of Jesus let Christ. them be destroyed let now. Them be destroyed in the name now. of Jesus, in the name of like, Jesus. Bees. like bees, they have surrounded they have us. Surrounded but let the fire of God, let the fire of God quench, God them, now. quench them now. In the name of in Jesus the name Christ, of Jesus. as I clap my hands, as I, clap my hands. I quench the surrounding enemy. That have surrounded me. Every disease, every problem that has surrounded us. Right now, anything that has surrounded your finances, surrounded your family, surrounded your life. Right now, let them be quenched by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Mamba baba di bakan Anything that has surrounded you, surrounded your business, surrounded your children, right now. Right now, we quench it, we quench it, we release fire in the camp, in the name of Jesus, we release fire against coronavirus, we release fire against poverty and problems that come out of this coronavirus, we release fire against diseases, diabetes, bacterial infections, whatever it is, high blood pressure, right now, be they are surrounded us, but we quench them in your name. We quench them by fire in the name of Jesus. We quench them now. We quench you now. In the name Cause of fire. Jesus. COVID-19. Catch fire. COVID-19. Be quenched. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
spirit of death be quenched in the name of Jesus Christ every, every cloud of death heavy cloud of darkness of death moving around it will not catch you in the name of Jesus because we we quench the surrounding enemies in the name of Jesus by by calling on the name of Jesus we decree they will be destroyed every cloud of death moving around killing people I mark you with the blood of Jesus I mark you with the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit thank you Lord huh I want us to pray the last prayer. Verse 17, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's what verse 17 says. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. At the end of this service, we are going to have communion. Yeah, because I feel like we need to mark ourselves with the with the blood of Jesus so that when the angel of death is moving because there is an angel of death that is moving around that angel will be quenched Amen. in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus and be destroyed Amen. So, so, so at home make sure you prepare yourselves to take communion yes and let us just mark ourselves with the blood of Jesus so that you will be passed over by that evil angel Amen. Lift up your hands and say, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the Christ, name of Jesus Christ. I shall not die. I shall not but die. But I shall live. But I shall live. And why shall I live? To declare. To declare. The works. The works. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. I want you to make that confession Come right now. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall live. I shall live. To declare. To declare. The works of the Lord. The works make of the Lord. Make that declaration. Say, I in th this year. In this year. I will finish strong. I will finish in the name of Jesus, I will live. I will not die. I will not die. In the name of Jesus, I will leave. I will not die. No disease can survive in my body. In the name of Jesus, no accident can take me out. In the name of Jesus, no depression can take me out. No disease can ever take me out. No disease, no depression, no accident, no evil, no devils can take me out now. I shall live and not die. I shall live. I cannot survive. I shall live. I shall not take me out. I shall not die. I shall not die. No disease, no sickness can drive in me. I shall live and not die. I shall see 2021. I shall be around 20 years from now. In the name of Jesus. Preaching. Declaring. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I want you to push back the angel of death. Any demonic death, premature death coming to you. We are pushing it back now. Before I continue. Is that okay? Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In name of Jesus Not in my name. Christ. Not in my name. Not in my nation's name. In my but in the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus we push Christ. back the devil we push and the, back angel the devil of death. And the angel of death. Who carries the grave with him. Who carries the grave right with him. Right now. Right now. Be pushed back. Be pushed Turn back. back. Turn, Turn back. back. Turn back. In the name of Jesus, name of don't Jesus. come near my family. Don't come, don't near, come my near my children. Don't come near my, don't children. Come near my church. Don't come near, don't my, come near my nation. Don't come near In my the nation. name of Jesus, in the name of as Jesus. I clap my hand and as I pray, I push back, I push back the angel.
angel of darkness. I decree. I declare. I push you back. I shall leave. I shall leave and not die. I shall not die. I push you back. I push you back. I shall leave. I shall not die. In the name of Jesus. I shall leave to declare. I shall leave and not die. To declare. To declare. The works of God. the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Somebody lift up your hand and begin to thank him. Tell the thank Lord thank you, Lord. you for life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercies. Thank Enjoy you, it forever. Thank you, Lord, for life. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you. Open your mouth and tell him thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing. You're a way maker. You're a miracle worker. First of all, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Tell him I thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for covering you, protecting me. My family, my children, my spouse, everybody. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless you. Amen. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here, working in this place. I worship you.
never be the same again. Thank you, Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. If you believe that he has done it for you, why don't you shout a better Amen? He's a miracle worker. And he's a promise keeper. And he is the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Your life is preserved. There will be no announcement of death in your household. Say a big amen. A louder amen. A faith, amen. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for uh, attending service today. That has come to the, we have come to the end of the service. <laughs> anyway, don't go, don't go, please. I have to preach. Don't leave me, don't leave me, don't leave us. Amen. Well, uh, I want to quickly speak to you. Um, of course, I want to remind you that starting Tuesday, we have season of withdrawal where we are going to be praying. And I want you to know that in this season, unless you pray, you are not going to make it. Unless you pray, you are not going to make it. Because I can tell you the only people who will make it are the people that God is covering. You know, those who call on his name. But if you trust in chariots and trust in um, uh, earthly people and princes, actually in that same scripture we were reading, Psalms 118, it says in verse number, uh, number 9, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. In short, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in governments and leaders of the government and all that. So our confidence is in the Lord. Amen. And I'm believing that all of you are going to prosper and do well. Your life will be preserved and do well. Amen. Amen. We are continuing on the subject faith. And we are doing faith and money. And I'm giving you God's way of making us great as far as finances are concerned. And I'm talking about the covenant of prosperity. Amen. So today, I want to break it down on what is this covenant. Well, last Sunday, we looked at many things. I hope you can remember because, I mean, if I go to the recap, time will be gone. But we say that a covenant is an agreement uh, between two people. Amen. And... Um, we say that um, in this case where God is the covenanter eh? and who is the originator of the deal and we are the beneficiaries. So when you enter into a deal with God, you can say I'm in a covenant with God. And I have told you that if you want to have uh, a certain level of prosperity, the supernatural prosperity that comes from God, so that you can become a man or a woman who has left a mark on this world. You must have covenants with God. Covenants, agreements. And there is, the greatest wisdom is to know what is the covenant that makes a person rich. What is it? Because there is a covenant that makes you live long. There is a covenant of long life, which you should also know, find out. What makes me live long? One of the covenants that make you live long is to serve God. Yeah. That is why the Bible says, I shall not die. I shall live. To do what? To declare the works of the Lord. So serving God gives you longevity. So that's another covenant. So there are people who will live long but poorly. Do you understand? Yeah, you can live long by, because you are serving the Lord. But you must escape that by now knowing what must I do, you know, to become a, 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 somebody who's supernaturally blessed financially. Yeah, because uh, like I said, finances in the hands of a Christian 
is not just finances. It's a weapon. And the day that Christians will understand the purpose of finances in their lives, then that day they will begin to do what they need to do so that they can enter and, and become prosperous. But you see, some of us, we think that we need money so that we can go on holiday. You know, or we need money so that we can buy that big car or whatever. So those are wrong motives. So the day the motive of God, as far as finances are concerned, becomes your motive, then you enter into a covenant with God that makes you prosperous. Amen. So today, the title of my message is The Covenant. The Covenant. The Covenant. So what is the covenant as far as prosperity is concerned? So this is what, if you're writing, you can write. The covenant of prosperity states, it states, what you sow is what sets the pace for what you will reap. The covenant of prosperity states, what you sow is what sets the pace for what you will reap. Amen. What you sow is what will set the pace for what you will reap. So where is this covenant in the Bible? Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21. So the Bible says, we can even start from verse 20. The Bible says, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offering on the altar. Then what happened, verse 21? And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again cast the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. So he is making a declaration of what the covenant entails. And he says, verse 22, while the earth remains, while the, as long as there is earth, then seed time and harvest... So these are, now this is the covenant God is making with Noah. That as long as the earth remains, you will have seed and you will have harvest. Okay? You will have cold and you will have heat. You will have winter and you will have summer. And you will have day and you will have night. So the Bible says, this shall not cease. So what did God say? What was he saying? He was saying, the earth is barren today. Because when, it, when, it, when they came out of the, of, the, of the Noah's ark, the earth was barren. No, nothing was there because it had been destroyed by the water. So he was saying, the earth is barren today, but I am going to fill the earth again on the basis of this covenant. I am going to fill the earth again on the basis of this covenant. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what you have gone through. If you enter into a covenant with God, no matter how barren you have been. Are you listening to me? A covenant has the power to break barrenness in your life. Barrenness in terms of finances, in any form of barrenness. Lack of fruit of the womb, of the of the. Any, any kind of barrenness. So you, the Lord was saying, as on the basis of this covenant, I am going to make the barren land full again. So the flood had swept everything, but God restored everything via the covenant. For, so friends, ladies and gentlemen, your sweat will never amount to surplus. Your sweat will never amount to surplus. It is your obedience to the covenant of seed time and harvest 
So the covenant is seed time and harvest. For you to become supernaturally blessed, I can tell you today for free that it is not your prayers, even though prayer is important. It is what you sow versus what you reap. Seed time and harvest. That's a covenant. It's a covenant. So no seed, no harvest. So seed time and harvest is what guarantees abundance, not your sweat. That is why it is not the most sweaty person who is the most rich person. It's not the most hustling person who is the most rich person. Am I talking to somebody in the house? And remember when we are talking about wealth, we are talking about the Proverbs 10, 22 wealth, which adds no sorrow. That's the wealth we are talking about. Now imagine for a minute a farmer who rather than planting seeds in the farm or in the soil of his farm, he goes there to the farm and then he looks at the farm then he lifts up his hand in the farm and then he says, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that next year at a time like this, I will have avocado fruit. Makorofea. <laughs> and then he says, Mambalabasha, Mambalaba, Ambilabadaya. He prays for 20 hours and then vibrates like a tractor and then turns back and goes home and announces to his wife, Baby, we have the heaviest avocado harvest coming this season. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you this morning that this farmer has rather signed up for a heavy harvest of luck and want. Why? Because avocado harvest answers to avocado seeds that were sown into the ground. So if you want avocado harvest, you sow avocado seeds. That is why John chapter 12 verse 24. John 12 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, a grain of wheat falls into the ground, must fall into the ground and die, or falls into the ground and dies. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. I don't know whether you understand that. That if you have seeds and you don't sow them, they remain just the seeds. But if it dies, if it is planted, if it, it is buried to the ground, it produces much grain. So now the devil knows that this is the secret. So he fights it. Because you can never harvest what you have not sown. So Jesus speaking, he says, now look, Jesus was not, this is the words of, these are the words of Jesus. And he's not even speaking about prosperity. He's speaking about himself. So Jesus is only, not only talking about himself but he's talking about a principle a covenant principle that is telling you if you want increase of grain take the one grain you have and plant it so the more seeds you plant the more harvest you get is it making sense yeah, so Jesus says, most assuredly, I say to you, those people who say, I can't give. I can't give my money. It is so hard. And so he says, so he says, that money remains that money. So, but if it falls to the ground 
and then it dies. Death is not a good thing. So for some time you don't see anything. So that is where many people uh, lose it. They say, but I've not seen anything yet. But the Bible says it must die first. Then it will produce much grain. Is it making sense? 1 Corinthians 15, 36. 1 Corinthians 15, 36. It says, 36. And what you sow, hey, brother, foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. So he's calling the guys, can you go back a bit, 35? So he says, but someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? So he's talking about the dying and the raising up of people. But he says, he gives us a principle. He says, foolish one, verse 36. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. So the scriptures above are not necessarily speaking about prosperity, but the, the Lord through these scriptures is teaching us a principle for prosperity. Seed time and harvest. Now let me say something. You three you can write it down if you want. Knowledge of scriptures is not what guarantees a future. Knowledge of scripture is not what guarantees a future. It is the practice of what you know that guarantees you a future. So you can know about seed time, you can know about harvest, you can know about covenants of God, but if you don't practice it, it does not guarantee you to experience what you have known. So it is not knowing only. It is in the doing. The doing. There are people who know about tithe, but they don't tithe. There are people who know about sowing seeds, but they don't sow seeds. So they are always in lack. So the scripture is telling you that if you have, you have a seed, every time God gives you seed and gives you bread. Find for me that scripture. Eh? Bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Every time God supplies to you, no matter how much money he has given you, in the money, there is seed and there is bread. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. The Bible says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. So our God who is a supplier is always giving you, no matter the amount you have received, it comes in two forms. Seed and it comes as bread. So when you eat your seed as bread, you, you are always in a cycle of lack. So now may he that supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed. Can you see? The, the prayer is not for the supply of food. It is for the supply of seed. Because the more seeds I have, the more harvest I have. The more capital you have for your business, the more you have products to sell. So the Lord does not say, the, the scripture is not saying supply more customers. No, no, no. It's like supply more capital. So your seed, as far as God is concerned, is your capital. Is your working seed. Is your working money. So if you sow with the mind that I am in this for my covenant rights. Then he will give you food. And then what will food, what will he do? He will multiply the seed you have sown. And increase the fruits of your righteousness. Wow. So today, I'm only going to give you testimonies of abundance in scripture. I'm going to show you people who have walked in abundance in the scripture. And how it is related to seed and harvest. So every testimony of abundance in scripture is tied to a traceable or it is tied or traceable to the practice of the law of covenant or, 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 or of, um, to the law of the covenant of seed time and harvest. I repeat, every testimony of abundance in the scripture. 
So when you study, how did these people become abundant and, and rich and great? You, when you study them, you see that it is connected to seed time and harvest. So I'm going to start number one or A. A. Abraham and Abraham rather. Abraham. Abraham and Isaac on the altar is a seed. God told Abraham, sow your son Isaac to me and I'll make you a father of nations. You remember that? So Abraham and Isaac on the altar, when Isaac was tied on the altar and Abraham was ready to put his knife through his throat, eh? <laughs> has rather brought a harvest. So by Abraham laying, laying his son on the altar, there has been a harvest of sons and daughters of Abraham today. And me, I don't so, I'm this Pandambego thing. Shut up, listen to me. You see, the problem is that you listen to the world too much. Yeah. Listen to God. Yeah. What, what, how did Abraham become a father of the nations? It was only until he took his seed, which was Isaac, and laid him on the altar and was ready to kill him. Genesis 22, 9, from verse 9. I don't know whether we can be able to read all these things because there are, some scriptures are very long. But look at this. Genesis, what? 22. 22. Somebody say 22. Come on, somebody. Say 22. Mm-hmm. Father Abraham had many sons. Had many sons. So, Father Abraham, I am one of them. And so are you. So, let us praise the Lord. You see? Now, watch this. Where did the children come from? So, of course, the Bible says God spoke to Abraham and said, bring your son whatever, and they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood in order, and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Are you listening to me? But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know. Now, a lot of people argue, but he didn't really kill him. Yes, because he had already killed him in his heart. And, I, and if I had time, I would talk, to, maybe with, with time, I will tell you why many of your offerings don't have results. Because if it is not given from the heart, it does not, it does not pay. So because he has, his son was already dead to him in the, in the heart. He was dead. So he says, now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram. Caught in a thicket. Yeah? By its own. I want you to see something on that scripture. So Abraham went and took the ram. And offered it up for a burnt offering. Instead. Many people don't read that part. Instead. Of his son. So it does not mean that. That, that, that the offering was stopped. No, the offering was just replaced by God. Because God has already known you have killed your son in your heart. By the way, if you read history, from that day, Isaac and his father never had a good relationship. He never lived with his father again. Yeah, because he was looking at his father and saying, you are killing me. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening? In the, yeah, you are killing me in the name of the Lord. Yeah, so God did not stop the offering. He just replaced it. 
Because the covenant has to be fulfilled. Are you listening to me? The covenant has to be fulfilled. And Abraham called the name of the place. How, so out of that, the, the, the name you always use of God, Jehovah Jireh, it came from that part. So at the Bible says, and Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide, which is Jehovah Jireh. Because he has provided, not food, he has provided seed. As it is to this day. So the mountain of the, so it as it is to, to, to this day, in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. And the mountain of the Lord is the church. Yeah. So in the mountain of the Lord, that is where your provision should come from. Amen. And how does it come? It comes through seed time and harvest. That is why one of the reasons why the church is in existence. To make sure you are provided for. Because it's your place of transactions. It's an altar. It's a place where you place your seed. It is your farm. Amen. So then the, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time. And said, by myself I have sworn. Look at this covenant. Says the Lord. Because you have done this thing. Because of what you have done. And have not withheld your son. Your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. <laughs> Multiplying, I will multiply you. Your, I will multiply your descendants. So that is what I was trying to show you. Out of one son, Isaac. Eh? God has given Abraham many sons and many daughters. And he said, I will multiply you and I will give you more descendants. You will have more children. And out of, out of, between Ishmael and Isaac, he never gave birth to another child. But all of us, we have become the children of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and has become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29 of the same scripture. It says, quickly, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And you are heirs according to the promise. So, so the first example of abundance comes from Abraham releasing his son on the altar. And he has now become a father of nations. Number two. Another testimony. I'm giving you testimonies of seed time and harvest in the scripture. Number two. Jesus. He was sown as a seed. So that we can be harvested. Harvest family church. Amen. Amen. So, God looked and said, I want the whole world to turn to me. Because all these people, the way they are, I will kill them. So, he said, I need somebody to become a seed. So that I can gain the whole world. So, Jesus said, here I am. I'm coming. So, that is why he died unless a grain of seed dies. Jesus would have been the only son of God. But because of his death, he was sown. And on the third day, he came back to life. And now, you and I, we are now called sons of God. So out of one man, Jesus, we have billions of people who have been harvested by God as his children. The Bible says in, first, in John chapter 12, John uh, chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. And to those who believe in his name. John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave, he sowed his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have 
Everlasting life. So all of us, we have been harvested as a result of one seed, which is Jesus. Number three, Jesus was sown as a seed so that we can be connected to the blessings of Abraham. Abraham's blessings are mine. Do you sing that song? Abraham's blessings, Abraham's blessings, blessings are mine. I am blessed, blessed in the morning, blessed in the noontime, blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Have you sung that song before? Yes. Have you heard of that song before? Yes. How have they become yours? Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. He says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse. So he became a curse. He was sown as a seed. Eh? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. You are the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. You can only receive it by faith. So... Through Jesus, our curses are broken and we have harvested Abraham's blessing. So what Abraham experienced, I should experience. Amen. The blessings he experienced, I should be able to experience. Because he, I am part of him now. Whether he likes it or not. Whether I'm brown or he's black. Or he's black and I'm brown. It doesn't matter. So the fact that I believe in Christ, by the fact that Christ was sown, I was accepted as one of Abraham's children. Number four. Is it four? Solomon or D or Da. Solomon. Hey. Solomon took a thousand burnt offerings to the altar. And then God said, hey boy, you have fulfilled the terms of the covenant. So you are entitled to the fullness of my blessings. Solomon, he took a thousand offerings to the altar. Ah, God said, no, 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 no. This is too much. First Kings chapter 3, verse 3. Many people wonder, why was Solomon so wealthy? This is the, the foundation. The foundation was the seed he sowed. It marveled God. It shocked God. God, God said, ah, this man, I must do something for him. Look at it. And Solomon loved the Lord. Hey, Solomon loved the Lord. Oh, love the Lord, somebody. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of his father David. Except that he sacrificed and burnt incense at the high places. Verse 4. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. Those people who say, I don't have to go to church. You know, I can do my home. Church is in the hand of somebody. I mean, some people, if you listen to such people, you just vomit. Yeah. Because it is... It is igno ignomerous people speaking. They have no idea of what they are saying. Anybody who has a walk and a covenant with God. You don't go to church even because of somebody. You go with this mind. I have gone to church not to be served. But to serve God. And to sacrifices, make my sacrifices there. Because I have a covenant with God. I have a week that is waiting for me. And for that week to become a success, I must carry my sacrifices into the temple. So he went to the high places in Gibeon to sacrifice. For that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. Then what happened? Verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. Those people who don't respect dreams. By night. And God said, ask what I shall give you. Ask what can I give you? I am wondering which day God will appear to me. You must do something that makes God leave his throne 
enter your dream and speak to you live live. Say, what shall I give you? God was asking Solomon. It's not because Solomon was the most righteous man. No, it was because of these offerings. He said, ask, what shall I give you? Hmm. Then what did he say? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father. And then he spoke about all the things he needed, wisdom, you know, verse 7. Now you have made your servant king instead of my father. I am a little child. I don't know much. I don't know how to go about it. I don't know how to go out. I don't know how to come in. Uh -huh. And your servant, look at his motive of sowing seed. It was for God to help him lead the people, not for God even to give him money. So, and your servant is the midst of your people whom you have chosen. A great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Verse 9. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge the great people of yours? 10. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then what did he tell him? Then the Lord said, because you have asked this thing and you have not asked long life for yourself, nor have you asked riches for yourself. Nor have you asked life, the life of your enemies. But you have asked for yourself understanding to design justice. Uh -huh. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and an understanding heart. So that there has not been anyone like you before you. Nor shall any like you arise after you. Wow. 13. Just because of an offering. And I have also given you what you have not asked. Riches and honor. So that there shall be no anyone like you among all the kings of your days. Just from a thousand burnt offerings. 14. Hmm. Me, I really like this. So if you walk in my ways and keep my statutes, if you keep my covenants and my commandment as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. 15. Then Solomon awoke and indeed it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Lord and the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered burnt offerings, added more. Offered peace offerings, which I'll give you the different types of offerings as, we, as time goes by. And made a feast for all his servants. He woke up and he said, what I have encountered, I must give an offering. He was a mad giver. That is why he was madly blessed. <laughs> so, I want to say to you friends, everyone that must come out of poverty must first comply with the giving law. Everyone that must come out of poverty must comply with the giving law. And finally, number five. I guess. Finally, number five. The widow of Zarephath. I'm giving you evidence and testimonies of people that walked in abundance. The widow of Zarephath was like you. Had nothing. Poor. He only had little for herself and her child. But she teaches us that to be saved from lack and imminent death. She had to first give out the last meal to Elijah. She was a widow and was about to eat her last meal. But for her condition to change, the law had to first be obeyed. The covenant law. So every material blessing is provoked or preceded by material seed. Every material blessing is provoked or preceded by a material seed. 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 8 to 16. Watch this. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. So don't go away. Listen to me as I finish. What does it say? The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Elijah, Arise, go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you to sow a seed into your life. Nine, and then, 
So he, he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And then he called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. Uh -huh. And as, he, as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread, like a loaf of bread, in your hand. Where is the next verse? So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have the bread. Only a handful of flour. Now this is the mind of every poor person. Or every non-giver. I don't have much. What I have is only enough for me and my children. If I give it, we are dead. Yeah, that is the mind of the woman. So he said, so he said I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bean. And a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may, I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat and die. Like, this is the only thing I have. After this, we are finished. That's the mind of every non-giver that you will ever meet. They will say, hey, if I give this, hey, what will I have? What will I do next month? Look at this, verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make a small cake for, from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Hey, what kind of prophet is this? Then what happened? He's still taking from the, from the widow. Then what happened? For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flesh shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So that is what preachers tell you. We tell you that if you give, God will provide. But many of you don't say amen. You say, eh, Mugondi. Mwizi. Yeah, that's what many people say. Verse 15. The Bible says, so she went away and did according to the word of, the, of Elijah. Did according to the word of Elijah. Like she did according to what the prophet said. And she... And he and her household ate for many days. Like it became magical. That after she obeyed the covenant of seed time and harvest. She ate not only. Now in the beginning it was her and her son. Now her household was included. She and he. And her household ate for many days. Because unless the grain of, of, of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. If she had said, no, I will not give. You go and look for money somewhere else or food somewhere else. She would have just remained the way she had said. She would have died of hunger. But because of obeying the part of her covenant. She said, okay, let me sow a seed into this. And then the Bible says from that day, they were having food. Verse 16. Then the bean of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil. This is supernatural living. This is supernatural living. This is what many Christians are afraid of living. They can't see this God. Where the food never runs dry. So many Christians want to see a lot of money in their account and they feel safe. But what you don't know is that that is not how safety comes. Safety comes when God is part of your life. And you show God is part of your life when you become a man who is a dangerous sower. So with the scriptures, I bring my message to a conclusion by saying, lack of knowledge is the reason many are poor. Friends, there is no poor nation without rich people. There are every poor nation you can think about, there are rich people living in it. Neither is there any poor village where there is no money lender there. <laughs> Therefore, you can live in a poor environment and be prosperous. If you know and do what it takes to prosper. 
So the poverty of the nation where you live does not determine your destiny in that nation. Am I talking to somebody? So your knowledge of God and his ways and your obedience to his covenant of prosperity is what determines your lot in that place of poor people. That is why you can leave Kenya, go to America, go to England. You will still be the poorest there. I was seated with somebody who was talking to me about uh, somebody that they were in a relationship with and the person was in, in, in Europe. So this lady said, I'm going to visit my beloved in Europe. When she arrived, she found the person ha does not even own a TV, cannot afford a TV in Europe. Because some of you, you are always dying. I want to get an America, you know, it's more, it, the, the, it is more lucrative in America. You can be, if you are poor. Are you listening to me? If you don't access the covenant prosperity that I'm talking about, it doesn't matter where you are, you'll be poor. Yeah, you can be in Singapore where very few people are poor but you'll be the poorest of that Singaporeans in, in right there. Yeah, because you are not into covenant. So it is your obedience, your knowledge of the covenant. What do I do as a Christian that determines your lot in this life? It's not the nation you live in. Yeah, not the nation you live in. The first time I, I arrived in Dallas, I landed like this. I said, I will never want to live here. I can only go there if the Lord sends me there. Not because I feel like, and this, when you go there, you see roads. Do you understand? You see buildings. You see restaurants. Hi. You see cars. When you see a V8 in Dallas, Dallas is big. I think because of oil. So when you see a V8 in Dallas, it looks like a RAV4. Because the road is big and then they have these big cars. Do you understand? Like they have cars that are 6.5 liter. Not diesel. Petrol. Cars that have two wheels, two wheels. Because of how huge they are. They, those cars, if you bring them here, they come past this Rongai Road. Magadi Road. Because they will push the other cars away. You can't park it in our normal parking. It's too far. Do you understand? So it's not like a bad place you, you live. But I'm telling you today that in that rich land, there are people who are poorest. I mean, I went to, um, I went to California one time. And I was walking in the street. First of all, I couldn't see anybody walking on the streets. But I found a white man asking for food. It was my first time to see something like that. Because we used to see it on TV, but it's like a movie. So you are not sure whether it happens. White man, I even had to donate myself because I said, if, if I donate, if I give, I remove myself from being in this situation. So I am not a part, part of this situation. Yeah. Then we went to New York. Pastor Masi could not believe to see homeless people on, on, uh, on the streets of Manhattan. Yeah. It's homeless white people in cartons. They sleep, they, they take a carton to cover themselves. Mm. So you, and you here in Kenya, you are living in two bedrooms and you think you are poor or you are so disadvantaged and you say, I can't give. So friends, no economic death or crisis can break the efficacy of the covenant. So enter into a covenant of prosperity with God starting now. Today. And start enjoying supernatural prosperity. That is my submission for you today. I am urging you enter into a covenant with God. And I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do with God as a covenant. Yeah, but I can tell you one of them is tithing. Like straight on, I can tell you, if you become a tither, huh? 
you enter into a certain level of covenant with God. Then the other seeds you will discuss later. Yeah. I can tell you everything I have is as a result of seeds I have sown. Yeah. From a car. One time I needed, I said, Lord, I want a car. I took the money that I had. I said, this money cannot buy me a car. I am going to sow it on the altar as an offering so that God will supernaturally provide for me a car. I'm telling you. <laughs> then one time I wanted to break the curse of not having cars. So the, the only car I had, I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said, give me your car. I drove the car into somebody's compound and left it there. He said, I've given it to you. Free. Four by four. I got lift. Somebody came and picked me up. Lift. Yeah. No car. From that day, I broke the curse of lack of car in my life. Enter into this beautiful life. It's a supernatural life. You don't know what's next. That's the thing about it. It's not a life that you know this one is coming next. It's like you are always waiting for a surprise from the Lord. Father, thank you for everybody that is watching me. I usher them into a supernatural life of covenant prosperity. Father, I know that what I am preaching and teaching these people is the truth. It's the way of life. It's the way you want it. I pray that their hearts will be malleable. Their hearts will be in acceptance and that they will never be the same again. Father, begin to speak to their hearts on how to enter into these covenants with you and let them experience supernatural provisions, supernatural wealth, supernatural riches that adds no sorrow with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because it is done in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Can I hear better? Amen. Somebody shout, Covenant prosperity. Oh, I can't hear you. Say it powerfully. Covenant prosperity. Somebody say, I am a covenanter with God. Uh, I cannot be poor. I will not be poor. Anything I need at the right time, it arrives. In the name of Jesus. It's time to give. It's time to exercise your covenant rights. Amen. Giving time is our blessing time. So I want everybody that is watching me to take your phones and give. You're giving via many other uh, whatever that is coming right there on your screen. We have the till number and then we have the pay bill number and then we have the buy, direct bank transfer. If you're paying your tithes, pay your tithes. If you're um, uh, giving a special offering, do it. And I'm sure God is going to bless you. Amen. I also want to show you what we are doing with our building. Amen. Beautiful. Would you like to see it? I don't know whether it's clearer. I don't know. Do you have it on the screen? Huh? Brian. Do you have what the roof? How the roof is coming? All right. I think Pastor Mas will send you right now. To Brian. As they are giving, I'm going to show you what is happening at the roofing site. Uh, so everybody giving, everybody giving. You're gonna, you can go off. And then come back. But I want you to give an offering. Now, now, now. Everybody giving. Everybody giving. Everybody giving. Amen. Amen. Covenant. I, I, I'm walking in a... I'm a covenant man. Yes. <laughs> Some people are jealous of me, but they don't know that me, I'm a covenant man. It's a secret. And I have my personal covenants with God. That you cannot know about. So that is why some of you. You get angry when you see my life moving forward. Because I have covenanted with God. In many things. Yeah. So my life follows a certain pattern. Because of my covenants with God. 
able. So I won't tell you my covenant with God. Because it's none of your business. But just know that me, I have covenants with God. I'm a, I have covenants with God. He is the covenant. I'm the covenant. Yeah. I'm the beneficiary. Yeah, I'm always benefiting. Glory God. So everybody uh, giving, everybody giving. We are going to have a song by Liz Macau. As you give, then I'll come and show you the pictures after this. So before we close. And then, oh, we have communion. After the whatever, I'll show you the pictures. Then we'll have communion. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, so let's quickly give. Then we are coming for communion. Please remember. Amen. I had forgotten almost. Or almost forgotten. <laughs> Amen. Liz Bacow. It's our English.
loves you as you walk by faith. Israel walked through the Red Sea by faith. Egyptians tried to do the same. Try to do the same but fail. Only by faith can you do certain things. Oh yeah, faith changes everything. Your faith is your secret weapon. So walk by faith and live. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate Liz McCall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I wanted to show you um, uh, whatever, how far we are with the building before we continue and take communion. So, we have started our roofing process. So, I uh, just want you to see a bit of what has been going on. Um, that is the first, what do they call that thing? I've forgotten the name. The trust, yeah, 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 trust. That's the first trust. Then uh, yesterday we were able to put two more trusses. And we have several trusses that are coming on. I'm believing God that this week we'll have all of them on. And you will see the place has changed. So that's our roof coming on. Come on, glory to God. Are you not excited about what is God is doing in our midst? This is so powerful, isn't it? You know, one of the areas that, that many, many people are not able to fulfill is the roofing part. Because roofing is a difficult, expensive journey. But um, as you can see, it is coming up and God is helping us. And we really thank God. Amen. I'm telling you, the day you come back, you'll find us. You know, I'm, I, was, I was telling Pastor Mercy recently that I'm believing God that when you come, when we come back fully, our first service will be in there. You know? Even if it's just try, before we, we fully finish, we can just go and have a mega service there. And some of you will be seated at the balcony. You know? And some of you will be on the on ground level. And it will be amazing. Amen? And your children will go to the basement. And uh, just, just do, it's going to be amazing. Is it amazing? And so that's what I'm really believing God for. So when you're giving, when you're giving, that is what you're giving to. You're giving into the propagation of God's work. Yeah, and at the same time, we have churches we want to plant. So they all require money. We want to plant churches in Nairobi. Tika Road, Eastlands, everywhere, and Gong Road, wherever. We want to go into Nairobi strongly. That's my prayer. We are taking new territories. And so one more time, can, would you like to see the, the building? Show us the building one more time. I think what's happening. Yeah. That's one of my bishop friends says that I'm building a theater. Uh, a stadium rather and I told him if it's for Jesus then it's all right Jesus Stadium <laughs> I think we will even call it Jesus Cathedral or something yeah. it's gonna be amazing right so that is it so the roof is going up bit by bit I'm trusting by by Sunday we'll have more progressive uh, photos amen and uh, we want to also say that out of this, I mean, we have not borrowed 
we have not borrowed any bank you know we, uh, if anybody is owed it's just a matter of time it's because of either they have supplied something and they need to get their check it's not because we have borrowed do you understand so so god has been so gracious and i want you to know it's your giving it's your giving and that is what shows you even the type of leader that is leading you do you understand yeah so um uh, it's a great step and we are not yet two years since we started the building it will be two years in october so before october we'll have a roof hey. glory to god amen and then we are we are trusting god to you know and tgl is also built you know, they used our former materials, but they have a nice big church. And they need also to have electricity in the church. They need to make it look beautiful and, and, and to beautify it so that when people go there, they can see the glory of God. The glory of God is also seen in the beauty. Amen. And I'm really believing God that in the next phase of our building, we will put the best of the best in it. Because you can have a structure, then you finish poorly. But we are going to finish it strongly and beautifully. Ex excellence will be, will be disturbing our heads. Amen. Amen. We will bring it to a cataclysmic conclusion. Hallelujah. Well, I want to, to have communion with you uh, before we close. And um, this bread or this body of Christ is very powerful the bible says it was broken for us the body was his body was broken for us why so that we don't have to be broken and covid 19 has come to break us but because of the body of christ we shall not be broken this is also a communion into what happens in christ's life and in christ there is no poverty because the bible says it became poor that we may become rich. In Christ, there is no diabetes. In Christ, there is no hypertension. We are praying that as a result of this body, every disease in our body, every barrenness in our body, every form of unfortunate circumstances in our body will lose their power. And the power of Christ will penetrate through. This is not an ordinary biscuit or bread. No, 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 no. This is the body of Christ. So, Father, thank you for this body of Christ. We pray that as we take it, all that is locked up in it, the dunamis power that is locked up in it, will explode in our bodies. And anything that is in our bodies that is not of God, that is of the devil, will disappear, dissipate, take off, be quenched in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the those who need babies receive babies let those who need money receive money let those who need protection receive protection in the name of Jesus Christ the body of Christ and this is the blood Father, you came up with a brilliant idea when you wanted to deliver your children from the Egyptians. You said, take a lamb, slaughter it, a lamb without blemish, and put the blood of that lamb on the doorposts, on the lentils, so that when the angel of death is moving, he will pass over the house that has the blood. And Father, that lamb we know is Jesus Christ now. He was a type. That blood was a type of the blood of Jesus that we have today. That because of the blood of Jesus, when the angel of death passes by, he will pass us over. Because he will see the blood. So right now, whatever is not found in the blood of Christ cannot be found in our blood. Addictions, evil, wickedness cannot be found in our blood let this blood that we hold in our hands today flush out and keep off 
any foreign evil that wants to come into our lives. COVID-19, yes. we flush you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Any other disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, barrenness, yes. whatever it is, as we take the blood, it is flushed out. Ladies and gentlemen, the blood of Jesus. This is my body, which is broken for you. And drink, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Oh, this is the holy meal that came down from heaven. It will sustain you. It will heal you. It will give you life when I see the blood. Oh, I will pass over you. Why don't you open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you for when your blood. I see the blood. Thank you for everything the blood has done for you. In the name of oh, Jesus, thank you for your body, Lord. Thank I will pass meal. over you. When I see the blood. We thank you, Father. It has power. It has oh, great strength. In I will our lives. pass over in the name you. Of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Can I hear a better Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for the giving of your people as well. May you increase them and bless them and let them never regret giving to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Now, I want to welcome you all into the month of August. Amen. And August is going to be our month of prosperity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalms 118. Psalms 118. Psalms 118. Somebody say, my month of prosperity. Amen. What do you think? It shall become what you call it. Hmm? Amen. Psalms 118. The Bible says, verse 5, I called on the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. That's our verse for this month. This month, May the Lord place you in a broad place. A place of prosperity. This month, I decree and declare what you did not expect as far as prosperity is concerned is locating you in this month. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I pray that those who thought that they cannot be employed in this month, you are about to be looked for and employed this month. Those who thought that you cannot give millions in this month, you will see yourself giving millions in this month because prosperity is locating you. Somebody shout, I'm in a broad place because I cried to the Lord in distress and he answered me. May you be set on a broad place in the name of Jesus. I pray that your phones will ring with good report. I decree that your Mpesa is receiving money in the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural provisions. Receive supernatural prosperity. Receive supernatural awakening in your spirit. Receive supernatural wealth. Health. 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 In the name of Jesus. Your long-awaited miracle. 
I command it to locate you now in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen and amen. I also want to uh, tell you that from Tuesday to Thursday, we are going to be in prayer. And in and, and, and our prayer is, is that you, you, you pray until when we, are about, when we get our break is when you take a little bit of a biscuit or something. And then we go back into prayer. It's long hours of prayer from 11 all the way to 9 o'clock with just a few, break, one break or so in between. So um, we, we hope that we can clock at least 20 hours of prayer. Is that a good idea? And receive a 20 hour miracle. 20 hour miracle. In 20 hours, may you have a testimony in your mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed and it cannot be otherwise. I'm going to welcome Pastor Mercy to conclude for us. Pray for us and release us. In Jesus name. Let's welcome Pastor Mercy. She's looking good. Let's appreciate our prophet, our man of God. Come on, appreciate him. Are you, are you standing? Why don't you appreciate him for that strong teaching and the prophetic word for August? Somebody say, August is my month of prosperity. Oh, you will, don't let the devil tell you, oh, COVID, what? We are prospering against all odds in Jesus' mighty. Why don't you appreciate him one more time in Jesus' name? Amen. I believe that you are so blessed and so I am. And I believe that this week shall be a very powerful week. Amen. So have an expectation. You will prosper in everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you lift up your right hand as we declare a blessing. Father, we thank you for speaking to us. We thank you because we are walking in a covenant with you. And Father, this month we expect great things all around our lives in Jesus' name. We also receive the grace to be part of the seasons of withdrawal starting on Tuesday. We pray that nothing will come to distract us as we activate our prosperity, as we walk in it, O oh God, as we align ourselves to the word you have given us. Father, we know we shall surely see it happen in our lives in Jesus' name. We declare every spirit of darkness that would want to interfere with our prosperity. It is under our feet in the name of... We shall bear testimonies of prosperity in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you and we receive your blessings in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. May God bless you. May you have a prosperous week. See you on Tuesday at 11 as we pray together. God bless you. We love you all. Amen. Bye-bye. The covenant I have with God cannot be broken. Covenant I have with God cannot be broken. The covenant I have with my Father cannot be broken. Covenant I have with God cannot be broken. I believe that the man of God, Pastor Jimmy Masharia, has been such a great blessing to you. Wanja, what was your highlight? Ish, today's service was just on fire. Uh -huh. You know, my highlight was that there is no... Your hard work does not guarantee your surplus. Wow. It is obedience to the covenant. That is my take home. Wow, that's amazing. And I believe everyone else, even the people who are watching us, they are going to be taking covenant seriously. Yes. 
Wow. And, you know, as for me, the thing that really stood out for me is that, you know, the more seed that you sow, the more harvest you receive. Because if you eat seed, you have eaten everything. There is nothing to grow. There is nothing to produce fruit. Yes. Let's be sowers. Yes. And people who own a um, covenant. Wow. That was yes. such a powerful service. And just to remind you that, you know, this same um, service is still available on YouTube and on Facebook. And tomorrow, very early in the morning, it's also going to be available on podcast you can listen to it as many times so that you know you get to understand it much better yes i love podcasts you know it's the only way that you can stay connected you know yes. because nowadays there is really no church so you have to take it upon yourself to look for the word of god so you have the podcast at your disposal you don't have to pay for anything yes. you just download them and you are always listening to them whenever you want and it's even cheaper when you download the message yes. on podcast you yes, only need yes. 20 bob yeah? 20 bob and you have all the messages that wow. you need <laughs> yes and that is fantastic so we also encourage people to log on to youtube yes. and subscribe Subscribe to um, Family TV, I mean Harvest TV, TV Kenya. Kenya. There you'll be able to access the content that we have for your kids between the ages of three all the way to 12. Yes. Imagine how fantastic is it's that? It's so fantastic. And I mean, you don't have to pay anything. It's free. Our teachers have labored to put the videos there. And so please don't keep your kids away, you know, from church. Make sure they go to Harvest TV Kenya and enjoy the amazing, amazing videos. We are also so excited about the seasons of withdrawal. Oh, please, yes. please make a point of being part of seasons of withdrawal. There are always so many testimonies and life-changing experiences that happen during seasons of withdrawal mm -hmm. and you want to be part of it. All you need to do is just sacrifice your food, sacrifice uh, as your, time. your <laughs> time and other things that you do for gratification just to spend time in the presence of the Lord and you shall be blessed. Thank you so, so much for being with us from the start of this service until the end we really love you so much thank you for the likes for the comments and just even sharing with your friends we love you we appreciate you and we're looking forward to doing again to doing this again with you on tuesday at no, seasons of withdrawal starting yes. 11 yes till late yes so just be ready <laughs> And remember to stay on top. top because that is where you, you and, and I, I do belong. Yeah.